the DM. I just had a big run, uh, fast walk up to the station. I thought it was going to be really late, but actually it's 6.40 and the train's at 6.58, so that's okay. Today the weather's a little bit different from last week, not so sunny. And today you can pretty much see everything. I don't think you can see the clouds. Look at these babies. <laughs> and the mountains in the back are all covered in snow. Pretty grey. And then we've got rain, sunshine. And that's where we're headed, south to London. So uh, let's see what the weather holds when we get there. Oh, and I was running in hailstones as well. First visit today is the British Museum to go and find some Viking artifacts. Chessmen, and this is the rest of the collection here at the British Museum. This is the walrus that it's made from. It's made from the teeth, the tusks, and you can just see inside what it looks like inside. And this little guy at the front, that's the berserker. You can see him chewing on his shield, which is where we get the word berserk from. This is a really amazing hoard. This is the Cowardale hoard. Well, part of it. You can see how much silver there is. That's a really big collection. This is Thor's hammer pendant. Part of a silver comb. Here we've got some more combs. And this is a, a brooch, pretty big brooch. You can see the size compared to my hand there. <laughs> it's massive. Uh, and I think it was used to go through the woolen uh, kind of jackets and, and clothing. Uh, and that would have pointed up to the shoulder. It's a serious brooch. And it's from around uh, 900 AD. This is very interesting. This is a magical staff. <laughs> Um, and it's come from a, a woman's grave in Norway and was believed to be used in pagan magical practices. And the word uh, volur means sorceress in Old Norse. So it's probably used in rituals. And this one's particularly bent, which they think it may have been bent before she died to reduce the power. Here we've got some Viking rings, here's some uh, finger rings and some arm rings as well. These are Viking brooches worn by women. Very beautiful. And some jewellery here. This is a plaque made from whalebone from around 800 AD. And this is found in a woman's grave in uh, Norway as well, in Lilburg. This is a Viking battle axe. And we've got two different swords. This is this one, pretty hefty thing, and a, a smaller one here. This is the spearhead. This is from Athens. It's made of silver. It's 400 BC. She is Athene or Athena, the patron goddess of Athens. Uh -huh. And you can tell she's Athena because of her headdress. If you turn it over, She's the goddess of wisdom. So you have the owl, the owl for wisdom. And she also gave to Athens the gift of the olive. Which is why they were a very rich city. So you have a very small olive leaf. It's under your thumb. Yes, there we are. Just there. <laughs> you have an olive leaf. And that's the gift that she gave to Athens. Is it made from silver? It's made of solid silver, yes. The wow. Athenians had silver mines mm -hmm. very close to Athens, so they had a lot of silver. This is an interesting one you can put with it. Oh, this together. is a euro, right? Okay, yeah. This is the one euro side, uh -huh. which goes for every country that's in the European yeah. economic community. But when they started it, everybody could choose a picture. Oh, and it's Greeks chose to put their very old coin on the new Isn't one. that really nice? It's a lovely connection. It's a really big coin. Yes, when the Spaniards went to South America, they mm -hmm. went to Colombia, to Potosi. And Potosi had a vast amount of silver. Yeah. So they made these coins in Colombia. They're pieces of eight, which is eight reales. So like the pirates. And then they sent them back. Exactly, that's why it's here. <laughs> then they sent them back to Europe with a Spanish flag on their ship. Mm -hmm. And everybody knew that they had pieces of eight in. So the <laughs> pirates would be circling around the Spanish ship to try and get them. Got an interesting message, this one. Money often has messages. Yeah. They're saying, we've been through the Straits of Gibraltar. We've been over the Atlantic. And now we have two maps. One is South America and one is the West Indies. Oh. So we're not the little European country yeah, anymore. Yeah, we're dominating we're the world. We're a world country, <laughs> yeah. And there, if you look between these two little rosettes, uh -huh. there's a symbol there. Does it remind you of anything? It looks like the dollar sign, yeah. the American one. It does, yeah, because nobody's quite sure where the dollar sign came from. 
Ah. But the first American dollars were based on this. They were this weight and this yeah. size, and they were interchangeable on the borders. Ah. The symbol actually is which for Potosi, which, Potosi, which is where the silver came from and where it was minted. This one is from okay. China, 300 BC. And what we've got here is the how much the actual piece of metal weighs. So they're really saying, this is how much metal I'm giving you. You haven't got yeah. the emperor, you haven't got country or anything. Yeah. It just says the equivalent of half an ounce. It's quite green, isn't it? It is green well, because it's like bronze, because it's bronze. But it's got obviously a good, quite a high copper content. Oh. Wow, that's a that's like a medal. Yeah, it's, it's British <laughs> money, right? Uh huh. That is George the Third. He's trying to look like a Roman emperor. Mm. If you look at the date, 1797, it's when everything was neoclassical. Yeah. Oh, so that fits with kind of fashion and trends and yeah. and things. And on the other side, you have Britannia. She uh, was the yeah. Roman symbol for Britain, but obviously yeah. when it was Roman, it didn't have the flag on. Yeah. The important thing about this one is that it was made on a steam machine. There were two people, Bolton and Watts. Uh -huh. Bolton was a metal man at Soho in Birmingham. Yeah. And Watts I was in Birmingham the, the other day. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. well, Watts invented the steam engine. So between them, they invented a steam machine wow. for making money. And they called it a cartwheel penny because this uh -huh. heavy circle around the edge is meant to stop the image being obliterated. And just here you can see the Queen's Resort, so you can see how they're all made on here in a, in a line. I think the mummies were my favourite thing as a child coming here, but wow, it's so busy. <laughs> but time to leave the mummies section. L'inscription ici, parce que c'est just my French there from school, it's been quite a long time, but it's just a little bit. So it was interesting. Um, lovely lady volunteer, she's explaining how the pottery was made. And this is a section that really appeals to me, it's all about navigation. Obviously, navigating around Britain. Uh, there's a few items here that I've seen before, particularly at the Maritime Museum. This is really exciting, and it's amazing how much it's changed, uh, you know, since the 16th, 17th, 18th century as well. This is a, this is a compass from Spheres. Barometers. It's amazing. I haven't been to this little section before. Normally, I just go to the, mum the mummy, so uh, this is really interesting. And a needle compass. And now we've entered a kind of geology section with lots of fossils, copy ammonites, and things here. It's really interesting. But look at these. They're absolute monsters. Look at the size of that. I'm going to put my foot there just to give you <laughs> a sense of scale. The fish. Like a some kind of a prawn, more fish, different kinds of shells, and then lots of different rocks. It's a pretty vast collection. I'd love to have a room like this. <laughs> look at these, the crystals, pretty big books as well. They look quite old. It's just an amazing space. Sadly, I think my battery's running out, so I'm trying to stop, have a bit of coke and some cake, and uh, charge up my camera on the computer and then off to my next meeting. But well, that was a cool diversion. Now I uh, need to leave Holborn and head to St James's uh, Park, St James's. Got to go meet my lawyer now. Um, <laughs> back to business. And I've got half an hour to get there. Back on the underground. journey today. Arrived in Euston, went to King's Cross, Holborn for the museum, and then from Holborn, Leicester Square, Leicester Square to Embankment where we are now. And now I need to take the second district line westbound to St James's, which is there. <laughs> Bit of a trek, good exercise. Luckily the officers are right across the road, so that's good. Right there. It's now half past five, just finished up my meetings for the day and uh, enjoying a nice walk around St James's Park Lake and then uh, head off to the youth hostel at St Paul's and try and find it and uh, then time to do some work, catch up with you 
now. Right now I'm at Horse Guard Parade, a little tour here, and you can see the London Eye behind. I stood in right in the middle of Horse Guard Parade, and this is where you might see the soldiers as they pass out after training. Uh, you can quite see it on the TV and things, so it's actually a really special day for them. Uh, I think they've got an event coming up with all the stands and the police there guarding it. It's a gorgeous day and uh, over there is the memorial to those who lost their lives uh, kind of in World War, World War One, World War Two, and in other wars as well. I don't know if you can see it but right in the distance that's uh, Buckingham Palace. This guy's got a, a very nice view with the lake and the palace. This cottage here is for the person that looks after the birds in the park. Pretty nice job. and head off to St Paul's now. A really nice lady who's from uh, Brazil. He's visiting, uh, stopping off from France. Uh, I'll give you a little tour. This is my bed. Um, little place for storing stuff. My wash stuff there. And clothes for tomorrow. That's my key for the room. That's my bed number, internet uh, pass, Stanley mug, as always. And then down here, I've got a little cupboard uh, for storing my bags. Um, and you can put a lock on there as well if you want. This is the uh, room here, pretty basic, <laughs> someone's towel, <laughs> little courtyard, um, only one plug unfortunately, but there's a little sink, no. and uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven beds, so uh, I can go get some food at half past seven, and um, I'll probably try and have a shower as well before uh, everyone arrives because I think there's only one shower for the two rooms so I think it's going to be quite busy and then um, I need to catch up on some emails and um, upload the blog and uh, get ready for tomorrow Ah, oh, that's so cool you can hear St Paul's Cathedral bells ringing let's see if you can hear them So the hostel building is the former choir boy school of St Paul's Cathedral, opened in 1874, cost £13,260 to build. The chapel is now a meeting room which has graffiti dating back to 1822. 
The original Londinium city walls built by the Romans are within a five minute walk of the hostel. As well as designing St Paul's Cathedral, Christopher Wren designed Hampton Court, Greenwich Observatory and ten other churches. Uh, and we're now in the oldest part of London, or Londinium, as it was named by the Romans who occupied it at the time. The City of London accounts for around $1.85 trillion or 36.7% of the world's daily turnover. London Underground is the oldest underground system in the world and the most extensive tiling project ever undertaken. 500,000 mice live in the <laughs> London Underground. to 11. Um, a little bit frustrating, there's only one plug in the room and unfortunately someone was already using it so um, that means I can't plug my fingers in which is going to be a bit of a pain tomorrow because my laptop is running out of juice and I need to charge the camera, my Google and my phone, everything's dying um, and I've got a busy day tomorrow because I'm at um, an exhibition all day and then I'm doing the event at the plants within tomorrow. So, um, <laughs> as always, it's one of the things that happens when you stay in hostels, unfortunately. And I didn't manage a shower either. I got back and uh, it's been quite busy, people have been in and out, so uh, maybe I'll have a shower tomorrow. <laughs>